incarnations in particular times of history. And that one way that Judaism uses to explain why history is so seemingly so haphazard, so difficult, especially for the Jewish people, is that there's a soldier, there's a soul drama going on. And we're towards the end of that drama now. We're, we're moving towards what's called the Great Sabbath. So I wanted to explain that from the beginning. The idea here is, first of all, a very useful diagram of the six days of creation. Very symbolic, very simple, that the Midrashim explains that something went wrong on every day of creation. First there was the, the light of the, six, of the first day, and that God saw in the fourth verse of the Torah, the Torah says, God saw the light was really great. Vayavdil, and he made Havdalah, he separated the light out. And Rashi says right away, based on the Gemara, in Chagigai, he says, he saw that the light was so good that he wouldn't want it to be used and misused and misappropriated by those who would, who would, who would do that, who would misuse it. So he stored it away for the righteous in the world to come. The, the Saber Bahir, a pretty ancient text, clarifies a little bit and says he stored away, again symbolically, he stored away six, six sevenths of the light and only used one seventh of the light to create the world. And then at the end of the sixth millennium, after the seventh, beginning of the seventh, he will reveal the, the light that he held back because we will have now come to the point where it's so say the end deed will now be corresponding to the first thought that he had, which is he really wanted to reveal all the light. But he knew that if he would do it, the world couldn't have had, we wouldn't have had free will, we wouldn't be able to be, we would have been robotic. So he created a world where he's greatly hidden in order to create a drama, the great dramatist. And at the end, we're promised that the light will be revealed. So this light is hidden on the first day, and then there's another hiding on the second day, another hiding on the third day, it gets lower and lower until we get to the Garden of Eden, which for us is still, it's not physical world as we know it. It's an energy level called Se Olam Yitzira, the dimension above ours. The Garden of Eden, according to the real teachings of the Torah, were not normal human beings as we know them, not normal trees as we know them. Very, very high energy existence. It's very hard to, ex to explain it certainly on one foot, but we have some really important texts to describe how this works. So according to this system, or the way of looking at the six, the six days of creation, we didn't get towards physical reality until after, after the Eden was lost. And then we fell into historical time, so to speak. And then that's this, these jagged lines represent the fall into historical time. This is the rising up and the, 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 the hint of, a, of, a, of an awareness sparkling down into mankind through Adam, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. And then Israel goes into Egypt. And then we come up and we come to Jerusalem, to Eretz, to Eretz Hashem, we build the first temple. We go down into Babylon, we come up, we build the second temple. And then we lose that, we're in historical time. And now we're here, waiting for the return of this level, and of this level, everything we lost along the way, we'll get back and we'll come back full circle. These are higher states of consciousness, according to this. Where we were there, we were the molecules in the Big Bang. We were er experiencing all of this on the way down until we became vegetative. We were mineral, mineral. We were vegetative. We were animal. We've been through all the stages. If you ever read the Stone and the Rock, the Once and Future King, the whole story of David. No, not David. It's taken from David. The whole story of King Arthur. A fantastic scene where Merlin is now going to train Arthur to become king. Anybody read that book? The Stone and the Rock? Lord of the Rings. You know the movie. I know the movie. That's, oh, it's from the old days. From the 50s. Anyway, so he says, Merlin says to, to, to Arthur one night, you see those ants there? We're going to become ants tonight. Next night, you see those fish there? We're going to become fish. You need to know that so you can be king. Fantastic idea. So in the Midrash it says that Hashem uh, took advice or took uh, or it, it, he, he announced to all parts of creation, I want each one of you to give something to man. The man will be the only composite being in the world and what he does will have an effect on all of you. You are all, you are all, each one of you, so to speak, 
um, exclusive entities, or I don't know the right word, but man will be a composite being. And so that's a midrashic way of saying that we've been everything. We have the entire history of the universe in the molecules and the cells of our body. Anyway, when I say that we were the atoms and the molecules and we've been through this entire process and that we're waiting now to go back consciously to receive, uh, obviously would go into what happened each day and what, what these, these simple drawings mean. But the idea is that very high level, very high temperatures, of, you know it's from the Big Bang itself, trillions times trillions the temperature of the present sun. There's no physical matter at that level. It's a, it's a mathematical abstraction. And that's what the Ari describes as worlds that existed before our world, where God was allowing, now bringing a process into, into in, in bringing about a process at the end of which a physical world would come into existence where it would be cool enough and hospitable enough that we could actually come into a physical existence. So physics and metaphysics comes together, Kabbalah and astrophysics. Please. What are the mistakes you're talking about? What are they? What's the mistake? <coughs> the second day is that the the waters were separated. The upper waters, the lower waters, and the, were separated from the upper waters. And the lower waters said, "Why do we have to go down?" I bring this in one of my books, but they don't have it here. My, it's called the Well of Living Waters. I go through each day and I bring the midrashic um, stories, the, the children's story level. They said, why do we have to go? And they cried, because tears, t salty, salt water. And God said, I will make sure that in, in the future you will be higher than the higher waters. And so we see that something is going on here that causes creation to feel that there's something going wrong. And God promises, no, no, when it's all coming full circle, you will be higher than the higher waters, because you went down. And I liken it, I liken it to the difference between angels and human souls. Angels stay up so to, upstairs, so to speak, and we go down. Jacob goes down into Egypt. It says, Anus al Dibur, in the Haggadah Shal Pesach. Jacob has to go down. Why? In order to get Israel. He, in order to get a deeper level of spiritual connection with God, he has to go down into the, into the depths of the pain of this world. Whereas Esau, his brother, gets his kingdom in this world. So it's a famous midrashim that Esau gets this world, but Yaakov gets the world to come because he went into Egypt. So the soul goes down into Egypt, into this world, into a darker world where we forget who we are and there's an amnesia and we have to struggle to become who we are. So my question again is to read What went wrong on, on these So days. basically it was, it was a plan going wrong, right? Yes, a pre-planned series of mishaps. <laughs> so that things can come for a circle of eventually. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, and every one of these, the Midrashim, are just fantastic when you see them. They're never in one place. They're never written in one place. They're all over the place. And you have to, you, and just like, you wonder, like, what their, what their point was. Why did they hide these, this information? I have a theory about that also, but the point is here that in each place that these things are spoken about, there's no connection to the other places. But it came together for me a few years ago, and I've written about it, and I'd be glad and happy to share yeah, any part of that book called The Well of Living Waters, where I go through the, the entire six system here, and then I go from the Midrashic, I skip to the Kabbalistic, and show that the ancient way of Kabbalah was through Midrash. You have to go back and put yourself in their position. They didn't have physics as a language. We have it now, and therefore we can can see the different stages of the way they express things in different times and we can see from our point of view that they were really expressing very profound truths about how the, the, the relationship between energy and matter and, and I would add consciousness that the whole story is the, is the evolution or the the, uh, the, 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 the the product of the whole thing will be consciousness. And we're not even anywhere near towards the end of what it means to be awake, or what it means to be aware. But we are in a very important stage now. And I'll go there with this diagram, which I call the cosmic clock. Yeah. Before you move on. Yes. Given that all of those levels are above where we